There's a happy word in verse 2 of Psalm 1, and that word is delight. <laughs> we're familiar with the word delight, or at least we're very familiar with the feeling of delight. You know, I can say, I delight in having a bowl of ice cream that has sprinkles and chocolate chips and little peanut butter cups in it. I delight when it gets to the point when it melts just enough so that you can start to swirl it all together and combine all the different ingredients and make it just a... Just a bowl of yumminess that <laughs> makes my tummy smile. Uh, for example, you know, <laughs> one of many things that can cause us, that can cause us delight. Lots of experiences. We're familiar with delight. Well, well, Psalm, Psalm 1, verse 2, it does not say, it's like, well, blessed are those who delight in, uh, in a bowl of ice cream. Though maybe it could have. <laughs> Psalm 1, verse 2 says, blessed are those whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on that law day and night. Now, the law can have a very narrow meaning. The Bible sometimes uses it to describe like God's actual laws, the Ten Commandments and other commands that it gives us in the Bible. And there's, there's truth to that. You know, it's, it's a good reminder that God gave us his laws not to restrict us or burden us or make our lives more difficult, but because he knows better than us the best way to go through life. He knows how our hearts were designed. He knows how our minds were designed. He knows what we need to put into practice in order to maximize, in a sense, the, uh, the joy that God intended us to live with. And that's why he gives us the guidance. That's why he lays down rules to keep us on the path that leads us to happiness, that leads us closer to him. But that word law in the Bible is also used in a different way. It's also used in a much broader way to describe everything that God teaches in the Bible. Everything that God teaches in the Bible. And I want you to think about that. Like, how would you summarize that? Everything God teaches in the Bible, not just his laws and his commands, but how kind he was to Adam and Eve the first time they broke those commands. How gracious he was to them in promising a savior that would save them from their sin. You know, think about what the main message of God's law is, of his entire word, as you think about how God acted toward the Israelites who complained and complained and complained while God was giving them food in a desert. <laughs> they said, they said, we'll never make it. This is awful. Does God even love us? He kept loving them. Think about what that main message of the word is, of what God's law is in the broad sense as you think about a baby in Bethlehem. So vulnerable. So small. It's so big at the same time. It's so powerful. Think about that baby all grown up. Healing people who are sick. Spending time with those who were sad. Hanging all alone on a cross. Stepping out of a grave on Easter morning. Promising his disciples that he would always be with them. Always. Whether or not they would be able to see him. You think about all those things, you think about the whole of God's word, uh, the whole thing, the entirety of it. And there's one thing that's really clear. God delights in you. God delights in loving you. From the very beginning, that was his greatest delight. And we know it always will be. Rest well tonight, my friends.